Okay, let's take a look at a student's reading fluency and look at their oral reading fluency in context. And when I say in context and out of context or in isolation, that's going to reference how the fluency is being tested or how the student's ability to uh, read words, the proper speed, accuracy, and expression is uh, tested. Now, in context means that they, they were given a text and they read out loud. Out of context, which is what we're going to do after this, means that they're given a, a list of words and they're asked to read the words out loud. And so that's when we're going to look at uh, them reading out, out loud and the words in isolation. So when it's in isolation on a list, that's going to be out of context testing fluency. And when it's in context, it means it's looking at their oral reading fluency as they read a story. Now, the student that we're going to work with is named Derek, and this is from a reading specialist exam the uh, the 08 exam. Uh, Derek is in first grade. So we're going to look at a text that a, a more basic text. And uh, I just want to take a moment. I just want to start to establish the rules in which we're going to analyze the open response essays. And this is going to be this is just going to be a test one for um, the oral oral language essays where we look at a student's oral reading fluency. OK, in where we look at their fluency in context. So we're always given a passage that looks something like this. And I'm just going to ask you to do three things as we analyze this uh, student's oral fluency. I'll do one, two, and three. The first thing I always want you to do when you're analyzing a student's oral reading fluency and you're looking at their oral reading fluency from a transcript of their oral reading, I always want you to take one minute and I want you to read it, uh, whisper read it to yourself, uh, and I'll write down read, um, and I'm going to write down here uh, with uh, no errors. So I want you to read this text um, with no errors. So that means when I say go, I want you to start, and I just want you to read what's here without worrying about the student's errors. So that means you're just going to read it like this. My dog champ is a good dog. He can sit, stay, and roll over. He barks if he hears a person at the door. Okay. I want you to start from here and read it and unpause me when you're done, okay? On your mark, get set, read it on your own, whisper, read it to yourself with no errors, go. Unpause. Okay, let me write down, read with no errors. You're going to do that for every single case study that looks something like this. You take a minute and you just read the text. Now, as you read the text, you're going to ask yourself a basic question. Uh, what type of text is this? What is it? a? And I'll give you two choices to make it easy. Is it a literary text or a story, a narrative text? Or is it an informational text or expository text? Which one is it? A narrative text with characters, or is it more of an informational text? I'm hoping that you see that this is, uh, this looks like some type of story. Is that right? It's a story. It's a, it's a narrative uh, text. Yes? Okay, so we have a narrative text structure. We want to get that from the first read, the first one minute. Now we're going to do the second uh, second read. And the second read, let me get a different color. The second thing I'm going to ask you to do, I want you now to read it, and I want you to spot um, errors. And we're going to just look at errors and see if we can find patterns in the errors. Okay, so let's just look at errors here. So we got an error here, 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 here. These are the ones that are apparent. Is that right? Now we're going to take a minute or two to analyze this. So let's look at each one. Um, the word is champ, right? And what happens? What happens when when Derek reads champ? They say camp. Do they fix it? No, they don't fix it. They keep reading. My dog camp is a you know, they keep reading. So my dog camp, no self-corrections. So got this wrong. Okay, what did he get wrong? What does this have that he got wrong? Well, it has, it had, uh, champ has a CH in it. Is that right? What do we call that? Champ, that's a what? 
CH and CHAMP is a what? Okay, you're telling me right now it's a constant diagraph. Is that right? And if we want to be really fancy, we could be like a, an initial. But let's, just, let's just say for right now, a constant diagraph. Now, what exactly is that a constant diagraph? A diagraph is two letters that make one sound. A constant diagraph is two constants that make one sound, and it's the initial sound of the word champ. Is that right? Now, looking anywhere else on these miscues, does that happen again? Yes, it does. He gets the CH wrong here, the constant diagraph here, and that's constant diagraph of CH wrong here in Chase as well. Again, the initial. Uh, constant diagraph. And he also gets CH wrong um, later on. Uh, on porch, do you see that? That's a little harder, but porch is the final, uh, final sound. Porch. So just by looking at this, within phonics, within letter sound correspondence, right, uh, we've already spotted an issue with uh, consonant diagraphs, right? And the one that we're looking at right now is CH and we could identify, cite three examples, champ, chase, porch. Okay, is there any other mistakes? Okay, well, let's just uh, look a little more. There's the, uh, let me do a different color. Uh, we have, um, let's see, we have the, the OO in good. Uh, let's see, we have uh, the EA in here. What are those called? Let me write those down. We have here uh, good, uh, here, and year. These are all what? Good, here, year. Well, anytime you have two vowels that make one sound, we call that a vowel diagraph. Do you see that? Now, we're not talking about a vowel team because a vowel team, remember, the first vowel is long, and none of these or a vowel team, right? Where we have that first vowel long. This is not like AI in rain or like OA in boat. But, but either way, even if it was those words, rain or boat, we would just say vowel diagraph and that would cover us. Okay, so in our second read, we're looking at the mistakes and we're trying to identify uh, if there's any patterns in the mistakes. And, and I guess when we look at this, we could see two obvious ones, constant diagraphs, like with the letter CH um, in, uh, in champ, chase and porch, and some vowel diagraphs like the double O in good, the EA in year and here, thumbs up. So that's step two. Step one, take a minute, read it to yourself from start to finish, no miscues and identify what type of text it is. Step two, go back and, and analyze the mistakes. See if you can spot, um, um, what they got wrong, and see if you find a pattern. Now, there's other things too here. You know, there's uh, there's some. Oh, there's a diagraph there. Oh, a, a th in birthday, right? And the da uh, day. That's actually a vowel diagraph. It's actually a vowel uh, team. We could call it a a, a um, we could call it a, a, a vowel diagraph if we want to. But there there's some other stuff going on in this. We don't have to get everything right. Okay, but we just need to at least spot two mistakes. Okay, so we have a mistake in vowel diagraphs and constant diagraphs. Okay, now step three. Step three, team, this is when we go back and we look to see how did, what did they do to fix mistakes? What did they do to help identify the miscue? Is there anything that the student Derek did? Now I'm going to clear it off. So we can see it a little clearer now, okay? Anything they did? Not, not much. Now Derek's in first grade, but Derek made a lot of miscues and kept on going, right? The only thing that he fixed was this. He fixed that. And what exactly is that? Well, the sentence should have read, my dog Champ is a good dog, but he said, my, my dog Camp is a goad dog. But then he's like, goad. Now that doesn't make sense. That doesn't, that miscue does that. What I said doesn't make any sense. When a student makes a miscue and they can hear that it doesn't make any sense, then what they do is they go around and they look for something called, they look for context clues. 
or more specifically, they look for something called a semantic context clue. So let me write down context clue. Uh, a lot of times whenever we see a student do a self-correction um, or when we see this C mark there for self-correction, it means they used a context clue to fix it. But um, this is a particular type of context clue. This is a context clue where they, they hear that it doesn't make sense. And when they hear the miscue goad doesn't make sense, then they look for a context clue called a semantic context clue. Let me write that down. Semantic context clue. And that means they're looking for a word, a surrounding word, that helps us make sense of the miscue. So let's see, what word or phrase helps us make sense of go? Goat's not right. What what it, what what would I need to look for? My my dog Camp, which he didn't fix, is a good is a is a go dog. No, go doesn't make sense, but dog, uh, oh dog, it's gotta be a good dog, right? You can't have a go dog, but you have a good dog. So in this sentence right here, uh, the word dog, right? Dog becomes a semantic context clue. Go dog doesn't make sense, but good dog does. So the student, Derek, uses dog as a semantic context clue to fix a mistake. Okay, so team, that's one thing we could say the student did, Derek. He used semantic context clues to fix that one miscue. So that's, that's the third thing we do. So step one, we go and we read. Uh, with no read with uh, no errors. I'm gonna try and do this in one to two minutes. Step two, step two, we go back and we sort of ID uh, errors, right? Mistakes. See if we can find some patterns of what the student's doing wrong that's holding them back in their fluency. And step three, we go back and we try and ID uh, patterns in things that they did right. How did they fix? What were they doing correct? Now, team, there's other things that Derek did right here. Um, if we if we analyze this, let's say we look at their use of, um, let's say we want to talk about their their ability to uh, decode high frequency sight words. How's their high frequency sight word vocabulary? I think it's pretty good. Look at all the stuff that Derek got right. High fre like look at all these irregular sight words that part of uh, high frequency uh, vocab. But they got words like my, is, a, he, and, if, uh, right, the, to, really, really, good. other, uh, likes. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's very, very good. On all, this is all high-frequency, irregular sight word vocabulary. This is all great stuff. And he also got some other words correct, two other high-frequency words right. Um, let me circle them. Other really good things, right? Uh, he got, um, well, he got these CVC words, right? Sit, dog, get. Uh, he got he got some words. He got he was able to get some words with, um, okay, so you see what I mean? We can go in and we can actually dig a lot deeper and find other things correct in Derek's work. I'm not going to do all of them. There's a lot of them here. Uh, I think when you do this stuff, Always remember when you're analyzing a student's oral reading fluency, you're looking at their oral reading fluency in context, how they read with a, uh, how they read out loud. We always do these three things. Read it to yourself with no mistakes from start to finish. Two, go back, identify patterns in the mistakes. So, to see if you can find at least two mistakes. And then the third thing you do is go back and look to see what did they do right? or how did they fix their mistakes? In this short case study for Derek, we've already spotted that Derek's using semantic context clues to identify unknown words, thumbs up. And, and two, he's also doing a lot of other things, like he's got a high, a, a high, high frequency vocabulary, right? And getting all these high frequency words correct. And there's other things too, but we're, we're, we're gonna stop at those two. So. We want to see if we can spot two mistakes and at least two things that Derek, the student's doing right. And this is going to help us if we have to write an essay and talk about the student's uh, strengths and an area or two areas where they're struggling and still need work. And then from you might be asked not only what their strength is, 
and what's an area that they uh, need help in, you're probably going to be asked to write an instructional strategy. So if you do one, two, and three, you're identifying the area of need and you're already thinking about, hmm, an activity. I could do an activity for this connected to phonics with constant diagraphs and constant uh, and vowel diagraphs, right? So we do one, two, three, and it's going to help us for whatever essay you have, okay?